hello guys welcome to engineers academy do hit the subscribe button if you are here for the first time now we are going to solve this problem which says that the epicyclic gear train consists of the sun gear a so we are given the sun gear a which is in mesh with the planet gear b so this gear a is in mesh with this planet gear b and this gear has an inner hub c which is fixed to b and in mesh with the fixed gear uh, ring gear r so we have this gear c which is uh, meshed with this gear b so this means that the angular velocity of c will be equal to the angular velocity of b so let's write that uh, omega b is equal to omega c and this ring gear is fixed so this means that the angular velocity of the ring gear is zero and further it is said that if the connecting link de pinned to b and c is rotating at an angular velocity of 18 18 per second so this link de is having angular velocity in the counterclockwise direction and that magnitude of that angular velocity is 18 18 per second we are required to determine the angular velocity of the planet and sun gear so we are required to find the angular velocity of the sun gear so we are required to find uh, omega a and we are required to find omega b so now let's say that uh, the point uh, which is in contact between this gear C and this ring gear R is let's say point 1 and it is located somewhere here. So let's say that this point in contact between this gear and this gear is 1. So let's say that this point is point 1 which is represented here in the free body diagram. And let's say that the point in contact between... Um, this gear A and this gear B is let's say 2, right? So let's say this point is 2. So we can say that somewhere here is that point 2 and this is that point 2. And this and the free body diagram, this represents that uh, gear A. So let me write that this represents mm, gear A and this point is that point E. As we know that the angular velocity of B and C is equal since they are fixed to each other through that hub C. So we can say that omega B is equal to omega C. So now as in the problem statement says that this ring gear is fixed. So its angular velocity is zero. So the point in contact with that ring gear is point one. So it will have zero velocity. So let's say that um, we say that this is V1 and V1 is equals to zero since it is in contact with that ring gear and uh, here it is said that we are given the angular velocity of this link de so this point e is fixed so this point d will move about that point e in a circular path so we can find the the tangential velocity of this link and uh, this point d which will be vd and vd will be equal to this radius which is the length of this link de times that angular velocity so we can say that the velocity of point d which is acting upwards is equal to r e d times that omega de so r de is the position vector of d relative to e so we can say that this will be we can say that this is r of d relative to e and it will be from e to d so this length is we can say that this length will be equal to this radius this radius which is 200 mm plus this radius which is 300 mm so so the length of link de is 200 plus 300 so which is 500 mm so we can say that 500 mm in meters is 500 divided by 1000 so that is 0 0.5 meters into the angular velocity which is 18 this is equal to 9 meter per second so this point d is moving with a velocity in this direction and that's vd magnitude is 9 meter per second so now the the this point 2 is the point of contact between this planet gear b and the sun gear a so let's say that uh, the velocity of that uh, point 2 is let's say v2 and it is acting in this direction so let's say this is that v2 and let me write that this is v2 and let's say this is v2 and we will have the same v2 here as well 
and this is that v2 so now we can find this v2 we can find this v2 using that uh, relative velocity equation so we can write that v2 will be equal to v1 plus the velocity of 2 relative to v1 or we can say the velocity of 2 relative to that point 1 so we can say that uh, v1 is 0 we are going to apply this uh, equation in the scalar form so the upward direction is positive all the velocities are acting in the upward direction so v2 is equal to v1 v1 is equal to 0 plus the velocity of 2 relative to 1 so as we can see that this uh, point d is moving in the upward direction so if this point d is moving in the upward direction and this point is stationary so what will happen is that uh, there will be some torque applied on this uh, gear c so what will happen is that um, if this point d will move in this direction this point is stationary so this gear uh, c will rotate in the clockwise direction like this so the angular velocity of link c will be in this direction and similarly link b will rotate in this direction as well as well so that's why we will have that v2 in this direction so we can say that um, the velocity of b and c is going to be in the clockwise direction so this is omega b so now we can say that uh, the velocity of 2 relative to 1 will also be in this direction and that will be due to that uh, omega b and we can say that the velocity of 2 relative to 1 will be equal to uh, <clears throat> the position vector of 2 relative to 1 times the omega b so so the position vector of 2 relative to 1 will be from here to here and times omega b so this will be equal to so we can say that uh, the radius of gear b is 300 and the radius of gear c is 100 mm so this is 100 and this is 300 so r of 2 relative to 1 is this so we can say that this distance is 300 and this is 100 so r of 2 relative to 1 is 300 plus 100 so that is 400 so we can say that this will be equal to 400 times omega b so omega b is unknown so we can say this is v of 2 relative to 1 so we, so we can use this here so this will be equal to uh, 400 into omega b so but as we can see that um, omega b is unknown and this v2 is unknown so we can say that v2 is equal to 400 omega b so so we need one another equation to find this v2 so we can write this v2 uh, we can write this v2 in terms of this omega d as well so we can say we can write uh, the relative velocity equations in terms of v2 and vd so v2 is equal to velocity of d plus the velocity of 2 relative to d so now we can write that v2 and vd is known 9 meter per second plus the velocity of 2 relative to d so again since this um, gear b is rotating in this direction and this point 2 is on gear b so the velocity of 2 relative to d is also in this direction since this uh, gear b is having the angular velocity in the clockwise direction so we will have the velocity of 2 relative to d in this direction as well so we can say that the velocity of 2 relative to d will be equal to r of 2 relative to d times omega b so we can say that um, now the position vector of 2 relative to d so we will have this so this is equal to the radius of gear b which is 300 so this is 300 so this is 300 we can say that this is 300 omega b so v2 is equal to 300 omega b so 9 plus 300 omega b so this is v2 relative to vd so this is v2 in terms of uh, vd right so v2 is equal to 9 plus 300 omega b and this is v2 is equal to 400 omega b so now we can equate both of these equations so v2 is equal to this so we can plug in this value here so we can say this is 400 omega b equals to 9 plus 300 omega b and if i bring that 300 omega b 
towards the left so that will be 400 omega b minus 300 omega b equals to 9 and this is 100 omega b equals to 9 so omega b is equal to remember that this is this 300 is in uh, this is in mm so we need to convert this so in meters this will be 0.3 so let me write that this is 0.3 this velocity is 0.3 omega b and similarly this will be will I, this is 0.4 omega b so we need to put 0.4 so we need to correct this we need to write it as 0.4 here so this is 0.4 and this is 0.3 so let's correct this equation so this is v2 equals to uh, 9 plus 0 0.3 omega b since this vd is in uh, meter per second so we need to write everything in meters so v2 is equal to 9 plus 0 0.2 omega b so now we can say that uh, this equate we can equate this so this is 0 0.4 omega b equals to 9 plus 0 0.2 omega b and now we can write that 0 0.4 omega b minus uh, sorry this is 0 0.3 this is 0 0.3 so minus 0 0.3 omega b equals to 9 and 0 0.1 omega b is equal to 9 so now we can say that omega b is 9 divided by 0 0.1 omega b is equal to 90 radian per second um, gear b is ro rotating with an angular velocity of 90 radian per second in the clockwise direction and if you want to find v2 we can plug in this value here so v2 is um, equal to 0 0.4 times omega b so this will give us 36 so 90 multiplied by 0 0.4 so this is equal to 36 meter per second so v2 is equal to 36 meter per second so now we know omega b which was required and we want to find omega a so now as we know that if v2 is in this direction so the angular velocity of this gear a will be in this direction and we can say we can always write this v2 in terms of the angular velocity of that sun gear so we can say that v2 is equal to the position vector from e to 2 so we can say that v2 will be equal to r2e times the omega of gear a so r2e this is r of 2 relative to e so the radius of this gear a is 200 mm which in meters is 0.2 so we can say this is 0 0.2 and omega a is unknown and this is equal to 36 we got this from here so omega a is equal to 36 divided by 0 0.2 so 36 divided by 0 0.2 this gives us 180 radian per second so this is equal to 180 radian per second and this is in the remember that this is in the counterclockwise direction so we can say that this is in the counterclockwise direction and this is in the clockwise direction so this is how we can solve this particular problem i hope um, this will help you in your learning do subscribe engineers academy for the solution of such more problems from Hebler dynamics chapter 16